Welcome to another episode of Daily Hope. Today we are in John chapter 18 and here we actually see Jesus' arrest in the garden. And it's a very intense scene, but there's one, there's one comment that is made and we actually see, we actually see this a few times um, in the Gospels where someone who is unrighteous says something that's very righteous. We also, we, we also see it in Acts as well. So anyways, before we get started, please make sure you like this video, subscribe to our channel, and hit that notification bell so you're notified every single time we post a video. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, that you will be glorified through this daily hope, Lord. We love you, Lord Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. For the next few moments, I just want to I, I want to make this comment right here. In John chapter 18, verse 12, then says this. 18.12 says, Then the detachment of troops and the captain and the officers of the Jews arrested Jesus and bound him. Verse 13, And they led him away to Annas first, for he was a father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was high priest that year. Verse 14, this is it. Now, it was Caiaphas, who's Caiaphas? He's one of the high priests. It was Caiaphas who advised the Jews that it was expedient that one man should die for the people. This is a nugget of truth. Now, it's not said in the way that we hear it, per se, but it's, it's, it's truth nonetheless. And so let me tell you what's happening here. They want to kill again. They want to kill Jesus, and we've been we talk about this all the time, right? The Pharisees, the Sadducees, the high priests, the, the the scribes. They they hated Jesus. Why? Because it was all relationship and no religion, right? And they were all about no relationship and all religion, and and that I mean, and that's I mean, at the at, at the basis, that's what it was, you know. I'm obviously they would never say they hated God. They would never say that. It was all about religion and it wasn't about loving God. They would never say that, but through their actions, that how, that's how it showed, right? So this, so this, their, their established religion functioned more like a, more like a, like a feel-good club, right? The, 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 this religious establishment functioned more like a, let's feel better about ourselves. Let it, let, let's give, you know, good vibes and good thoughts to each other and, and let's make sure we're doing good things and right things so that we're good people and, 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 and Jesus, our Lord Jesus, was way more than that. Amen. And I really feel like religion, re, it's what religion does. Religion sucks relationship out of, out of the Bible. It really does. And this Bible is full of relationship. From, from the beginning in Genesis, the Lord had a desire for relationship with Adam and Eve. When we go to Abraham, what, what, what's there? There's relationship. There, 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 there's conversations. When we go to Moses, there's relationship. There's conversations. So on and so on and so forth. So this, listen to me, church. This Bible is full of relationship. It's all centered around uh, our God wanting to have relationship with His people. Literally. Now, it, it, the Bible. I mean, the Bible is an expression of His heart. It's an expression of His will. If it's, it's an expression of, of who He is, right? But you know who God is. God is someone who loves you and who desires to have relationship with you. Amen. So that's and 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 that's what Jesus was talking about, right? He's like, this is the kingdom. Now, Jesus th- doesn't throw out religion out the window. No, 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 no. Because um, we know in um, I think it's James. I think James. Maybe Jude. I'm not sure. But, 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 um, but the writer in the New Testament says that, you know, perfect religion is like making sure like the widows are taken care of. It's making sure you visit um, people in prison. Right? So Jesus doesn't throw religion out the window. He just puts religion in its proper place. He says, listen, religion flows out of relationship. Right to be a religious person, where you have a discipline of reading your Bible, when when you have a discipline of praying, we have a discipline of coming to church, when you have a discipline of praying for your enemies, when you have a discipline of bringing your tithes and offerings. These these are religious things, but without relationship, what's the point? There's no point without relationship. Amen. So. Back to the scripture, right? Verse 14, Now it was Caiaphas who advised the Jews that it was expedient that one man should die for the people. 
here is the irony. It's so ironic that Caiaphas says this because in Caiaphas's mind, he's like, listen, we got to save what we have. And because they, here, deep down inside, like they know, they know that this is wrong. Like they know, like this is not good that we should kill someone. But we're, but, but they were so like, we don't want to lose what we have in our, in our synagogues. We don't want to lose what we have with the people. It's like, you know what? It, it's in their mind, they're like, we got to save the people from this madman. And even if it means killing someone and killing and, and, and expediently killing him, it's worth it because we're going to save everyone. We're going to save, we're going to sacrifice the one to save the masses. And here's the irony. That was God's plan. That is God's plan. Caiaphas doesn't know it. Caiaphas doesn't know it. But, and, and, and here's the thing. And I, I, I don't want to get too complicated here, but here's what we know from Romans, right? That God's the one who puts people in authority. Caiaphas is a person in authority. And we know that people, when people in authority say things, it has a lot of impact. Why? Because they have that authority given by God. God's the one who appoints the, the, these offices, these places of power. Now, what man does with it, that's not up to God. That's up to them. But there's a certain anointing that I think is here. There's a certain um, grace that is here that Caiaphas says something. He says it for the wrong reason. He says it for the wrong reason, but it's still the truth. Jesus is dying for the world. Jesus is dying for the multitude. Or the way that, that, that Caiaphas says it, it says it was expedient that one man should die for the people. And that's exactly what the will of God was. That our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, would die once and for all for the sins of mankind. So that all, so that, all that would believe in Him, all that would, all, all that would confess Him as Lord and Savior, would now be in His family and be, and, and be reunited with their Creator. And so here Caiaphas is thinking he's, he's, saving, he's saving themselves, right? But really, Caiaphas is right in the will of God, not knowing it, but right in the will of God and, and, and confessing this death of this man is going to save all people. He had no idea what he was saying or thinking. He thought he did, but he really didn't. Later, later when... When, when, when Jesus is, when, when it's Jesus and Barnabas, right? And Pilate's like, you'd rather let go a, a prisoner, a murderer, you'd rather let them go than this man who seems to be innocent. And here's what they say. Here's, here's what the religious, the, the, the people in authority, the religious Jews in authority, here's what they say. They said, his blood be on us and our children. His blood be on us. In other words, we'll take responsibility. We'll, it, 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 you can blame us. That's exactly what's happening. That, that, that is exactly the will of God, that, that, that we would be covered in the blood of His Son to cleanse us, to, 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 to receive, to, to be baptized into His death. Amen? So, I love that verse because He's saying something that's so true and He has no idea what he's saying, and it's kind of funny, but it's pretty awesome to see that, amen? Anyways, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for your sacrifice. As we approach Easter in a couple of weeks, Lord, we, we just, we want to have you in mind, Lord, your death, your resurrection, God, your sacrifice. You, you paid for our sins, and for that, Lord, we say thank you, Lord. We say thank you, Jesus. We say thank you, Lord Jesus, for being that sacrifice for us so that we can be reunited in, re in relationship with you, Lord. Thank you, God, for loving us first. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. That will conclude today's Daily Hope. Please make sure um, in the, our description box that you click on those links. One is to give today. Hope thank you guys so much for your generosity. The other one is to um, follow our reading plan so you can follow along as we go through these last few chapters of John, also, I want to know, what was your takeaway? Please put those in the comment section because you guys encourage me. And at Hope Community, people are our heart. Generosity is our opportunity. Excellence is our spirit. Smiling is our favorites. And Jesus is our Lord. We'll see you tomorrow for John chapter 19.